everybody. Welcome to Phil at Filament. Today's special guest, Matt Morton.
I'm still hanging out in the basement in Hilliard. <laughs> Go ahead, your turn. Not that big time. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. So I'm musically ignorant. I have absolutely no musical ability, talent, or anything. So I'm watching you two play, and I realize that you know each other, you've played before, but you don't necessarily, one of you doesn't necessarily know what the other one is going to play. So how do you sit there and play things separate and still have it come out sounding so fabulous? Sorry. <laughs> yes, that. Listening is the first thing. You know, the biggest thing is you, you want to be in touch with your fellow musician. Um, you can always tell someone who's just starting out because in this kind of situation they just play all the licks they know and uh, hog up all the, all the space. So, and we've played together a lot. Like we've, we've set up uh, that GoPro in my basement several times and, uh, and just sometimes those sessions have lasted a couple hours. <laughs> we just look up and you're like, uh, oops, I, I was go. supposed to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mainly it's, you know, the first thing you identify is like kind of what harmonic center they're playing in, what key. Um, that was an A. Um, it was, it was minor-y, I guess. You know, you, you play around with different uh, scales that all kind of have that minor tonality, that flat third in, in there. Um, but other than that, it's, it's just, uh, you get better at with time, I think. It, it's, it's such a fun way to play, to be improvising. Oh, this is my ancient Echo Plex. Well, we also spent a lot of years in a jam band, so we spent a lot of time improvising off of several other people doing whatever they wanted in that moment. So he's got a lot of experience, not just with Phil, but with improvising in general. Very impressive. I believe there's like an innate ability with a lot of musicians that can improvise as well, to just buy, they, they feel, what's going on without being that guy that does a thousand licks or, mm -hmm. you know, that just keeps it cool and relaxes and just goes with the moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, th I think it's a little bit of, of talent and then a lot of work because, I mean, I think talent grows on trees. I think everybody in the room is talented at something. And I know for certain that I'm not the most talented guy at any of these instruments or electronics or anything. I think I'm just stubborn and, and stuck with it longer than they did. <laughs> That's the key. That's the key. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just do my best and work my butt off and, uh, and try to have fun. I, I think really uh, you get good at what, you're, what you have the most fun at. And uh, I certainly, like even if I had $50 billion in the bank, I would still obsess about gear and music and I'd always be on the hunt for new music to listen to and uh, trying to learn new stuff, you know. I'm a, grew up a guitar player, so like having a mini mode out is, is a whole other world, but I'm trying to push myself to, you know, do new stuff, always new stuff. There's, <coughs> in this room, we've been doing this every Wednesday for a year and a couple of months. In this room, we've been doing this every Wednesday for a year and a couple of months, and it's always a different person. And uh, some people are easier to do it with than others. Um, Matt and I have a thing, so it's not really fair. Um, I knew this gig was easy, so I didn't really have to think about it, because we have a history. And I've generally played with people that I've never even met on this gig, and so that adds another layer of interesting to it. Uh, sometimes those things are amazing and fabulous and happy accidents are all over it. And sometimes it's just like a work. So it just really depends on the chemistry. And he and I have things. So that's you two are yeah. so independently strong. And you got the same haircut. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. Oh. There's less hair in that's between right. our brain <laughs> <ways. laughs> That's what I'm saying. Why do you have to do that, y'all? I don't know. <laughs> kind of stuff where one person is much louder than the other person. It was so beautifully strong from both of you that it really came together wonderfully. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah, no one had well, to lead and no one had to carry. I know yeah. um, I don't have a, a really good visual memory. Like, even when I read books, if it's a cliff, it's always the same cliff side. If it's a meadow, it's always the same meadow. But um, you're
during that set, um, what was happening in my very tiny visual memory was this vast, like, battle scene in a film <laughs> where, you know, toward the end of the movie and they don't want to bother you with the battle sounds, it just <laughs> becomes silence and then you only have the soundtrack to tell the story and that's what was happening. It was really rich and there was a lot going on and it was lovely. He is a soundtrack composer. Yeah, there's that. One I was thinking battle the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, There's no way you can prove it wrong. <laughs> one of the hardest things to, to do, I think, is to find the limits of loudness. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people compete. Even if you're in the same band, you're like, well, the guitar player wants to be louder than the drummer, and the blah, blah, blah. But finding that, you don't have to be loud to be right. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just keep it minimal and just keep it even. And it works out perfectly. It was nice. Thanks, Mark. All right, let's play some more. Yeah, All right. let's do that. All right, Necro Plex. Nah, that's talk. Come on, guys. <laughs> I will do some more.
Let's see, what didn't I have on? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, what didn't I have on? <laughs> Questions, comments, where are we? Say more. So how did you pick your instrument? Oh, me? Um, I don't know. I think I was just drawn to the guitar, anything with strings, forever. I, I actually wasn't even into keyboards until I was probably in my late 20s, I think. Um, just always, it's just felt... It felt natural mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Um, I had an uncle who um, played guitar and taught me for like the first six months, and it just felt like kind of a natural thing. Like it flowed out of just loving music, and I was mainly into rock and roll and stuff when I was young. I mean, I've branched out in quite a few different directions since then, but um, I still come back to it all the time. Like it actually feel that's why I brought a guitar tonight. I, because um, I haven't been playing it very much. I've been playing with synthesizers a lot lately. So it felt really good to, uh, to get this guy out. And actually, I met, the, I, I met um, Phil through, uh, through guitars. Um, I have a Les Paul back here that's kind of my, my fail-safe in case anything happens to this guy. And uh, I bought that at Cowtown Guitars. In 1995, and you were the guitar tech, <laughs> and he has since moved, Jesse's moved to Vegas. Yeah, he Jesse Pawn Stars or moved to. He's a, yeah. He get, gets called up in on Pawn Stars when there's a, a guitar or a musical <laughs> instrument to get uh, mm -hmm. to get appraised, and you. That's when you opened your own shop, mm -hmm. and I bought this guitar for eighty-five dollars. At a, uh, it's a 1964 silver tone. It was like a a, bu a budget copy of a of a, <laughs> of a a Fender Jazzmaster. I thought your question was like, how did you choose that guitar? <laughs> oh, this guitar? You have? That's also no, a no, no, question. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, also I bought a different question. I bought this for under a hundred dollars, and Phil turned it into my favorite guitar in the world. It, whatever for whatever reason this thing just like his eighty five dollar guitar is his favorite of like forty guitars. Yes, <laughs> it is. Um, I have a secret to you. Because of those big fat hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Speaks to him in whatever you, way. You, you kind of it. You know they choose you just like pets. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I don't and know. Ood would sound it, good with you too. Uh, the what? An oud. An oud. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have that yet, so. No. <laughs> Next time. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would sound really mysterious. <laughs> That's I like awesome. The, uh, I like the change up because normally Phil's the one picking it, and the other person is the one doing the ethereal stuff, and he'd get out the bow sometimes, but not a whole lot, so. It was nice when he was using the bow and your guitar came in. That was lovely. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's he's awesome with the bow. So beautiful to watch that you really are, Phil.
the dynamics and can pick up and oh, 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 yeah, the tension's rising. It depends. You know, sometimes like uh, now this is not, she's not a drummer, but we, the only time Phil and I have played with another person was Lisa Belladonna, who, yeah. is, who is, by the way, a drummer. Ooh. Who is a drummer. She's at everything. She yeah. she's like, like because when I was in a band with her, I'd go to her house and practice, and she would play the drums and make me look stupid. <laughs> you know what she I mean? She makes us all look stupid on every instrument. Yeah. Yeah. But my <laughs> point is, you, couldn't, you can't fault anything of her skill, but it changed the dynamics a lot. Oh, yeah. it, I would love two to see people, that here, you get, there's a reason why, you know, the Black really Keys awesome. and the White Stripes and, you know, so many uh, two-person <laughs> bands. You can, you can turn on a dime, whereas a drummer, in that situation right there, there's a certain inertia going with a drummer where they'd want to, like, keep grooving because the, the groove is cool. Mm -hmm. But, like, we were just like, it's yeah, over. I can't <laughs> believe you took your seats. <laughs> <laughs> like, so like so I just did something psychedelic and you just went with me right and right. it was awesome it was really but cool. it's it's the more people you have the more difficult it is well it, it's 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 the difference between you know driving a, a little tiny little boat with a little tiny motor in it and an ocean liner the more people you got the harder it is to move to stop it right to, to, to just change anything. your anything because it has its own inertia and boy you can't just but you know, when you've got a smaller group of people, you can step on the brakes and spin and go off this other way. Just that's like a great yeah, right. for us. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Nice. 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 Sorry, I got it. took us out of the water and put us in the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right there. With that, <laughs> yeah. Right on. And speaking of drummers, I'm going to bring up a drummer for this last piece. Vincent, this is my son. He's going to come up and play. Yeah. 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 This is This is matching. Excellent. He couldn't remember who I was, so Phil was like, yeah, you know, the, I picture, got, like, the, the one with the <laughs> picture where you have the knife. Oh, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. I feel like I know and now you're thing. forever going to be <laughs> that guy. The knife guy. The knife guy. Oh, he's yeah, not changed. That's it. Thank you. 